Sport Podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. I'm Jordi Canan and I'm delighted today to be joined by one of Tipperary Camogie's greatest ever players, four-time All-Ireland winner Claire Golden. Claire, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks a million, Jordi. Um, I'm going to begin by just reading down through a list of your uh, achievements, your role of honour. It's a phenomenal list and I suppose I'll just give listeners a reminder of the amazing Camogie career that you had. Um, so have here in front of me, you started off playing with Templemore, you won numerous underage titles, under 12, 94, 96, 97, under 14, county championships, 96, 97, 98, 99, then there was Fela in 96 and 2000, under 16, county championships, 97, 99, an intermediate championship in 1998, uh, under 16, Pan Celtic, 97, 98, 2000, and an All-Ireland Community Games final in 99. Then in, when you're with Tepmore as well, you play with the boys, with Jakey Brackens, and won mid and county under 12 titles, uh, mid under 14, and under 14A f- football, and hurling final in uh, 2000. Then you moved to Cashel in 2001 and had a very successful career with Cashel, uh, winning six senior county titles, six Munster titles, and two All-Ireland t- club titles in 07 and 09. Uh, you picked up player in the match in 09. You also played football with Brian Brews, winning a Munster, a county, a Munster, and an All Ireland title in 2009. And then moving on to your career in the blue and gold, um, you won a Munster under 16 in 2000. You won four senior All Ireland titles 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2004. National League title in 2004. Munster final then in 03, 04, and 2010. You picked up an All Star in 04, 05, and 07, a Lynch Pin Award in 03. You were nominated for All Stars in 2006, 2008, and 2009, and you were awarded Player of the Decade in 2014. That is some list of achievements. And the first thing I'm wondering is where do you keep all those medals? <laughs> God's gas. It's only when you read them all out there now that you kind of sit back and say, geez, I did achieve a, quite a bit. Like, but uh, if I was to be honest, where are those? Every single one of them are at home in mum and dad's house, except for the All-Stars. They're up here. And if I was to be perfectly honest, we have them in a cupboard. <laughs> Which is terrible, really. Because <laughs> <Very good. laughs> they're, they're, they're like weapons up here, so we can put them away for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you'd nearly need to build an extension to, to host all them awards and medals. It's a phenomenal achievement. But I suppose the one that jumps out for me and the reason I most wanted to get you on the podcast really was that in 2000, at only 14 years of age, you played in an All-Ireland Senior Camogie Final. You won an All-Ireland Senior Camogie Final. You're the youngest player to play in one um, since 1950s. I think you're the youngest person to hold a medal. And I suppose, if I just think back at that, I just think, God, it's bonkers. You were only 14. You turned 14 in March. You were playing under 14 that year. And you won a, a Senior All-Ireland Final. Like, do you think back at that and go, God, that was a bit mad. I was only 14. I do, because I suppose when I look at players now, and if you saw a really good player at 12, 13, 14, you'd never in your wildest dreams say, God, like, you know, she could be playing for tip in two or three years' time or whatever. Um, Looking back, like, when I think of it, it actually really didn't faze me at all. Um, I played so much, and, like, I was called into the senior team and it was great and it was brilliant and I was so excited about going in. But like, it didn't phase me at all, um, which is the, the weirdest thing. As I got older, I got, I used to get more anxious about games. I used to get more nervous. But at 14, it didn't phase me at all. I just thought like, it's another game. It's another day. I just got on with it like. Yeah, because in 1999, Tipperary uh, won the senior all for the first time, a big breakthrough. You know, names like Dear to Use, Feed Laney, you know, the wire became, you know, household names. And while the same day that they were winning the All Ireland final, I think you were playing in um, the Community Games final for Temple Moor. And there, like a year later, you were playing yourself in an All Ireland final. You know, you're saying you didn't get nervous before the game or. No, it's gas. I can actually remember the day in Mosny. Um, we won that, uh, I think it was under 13 and a half or something, uh, yeah. or under 13. And I remember we. Going back to Mosley, there was a chalet, and we, we all ran back to the chalet to see the second half of the, the Camogie match. And uh, it was brilliant. We were watching it. Um, and like that, like 
me, I always say in my own head, I don't play for tips sometimes, you know. And I remember Martin Burke, who was our trainer at the time, like, you know, and Martin was just phenomenal. Um, I remember Martin Burke when they won it and they were going up to collect the O'Duffy Cup and all that. I remember Martin saying, you will be there now very, very soon. And I did, I kind of thought, yeah, yeah, you know. But, um, you know, little did I think it would be a year later. And I'd say really little did Martin think it would be a year later. But just, I suppose, the way things panned out. Yeah, it's just amazing. Um, like, if uh, we have a team photo there of the 2000 final there. And if you see it, you'd fail to pick out the 14-year-old kid on the team, I suppose. You know, you're physically, athletically quite tall for 14. Um, in the photo there, you're eight, I think from left to right in the back row, standing there between Suzanne Kelly and Angie McDermott. Like, you know, your parents probably weren't worried from that point of view, you were strong and physically able for the game, but, you know, were they worried for you? Maybe, had you any hesitations about you joining up with the panel that you were so young, the pressure on you or? Yeah, well, uh, that's one thing I'd always say, physically I was well able for it. Like I was, okay, I probably wasn't, I was slight enough, but I was tall and I was still well able like for it. I suppose playing with the boys toughened me up big time, you know, like I was playing with the boys since I was nine or ten, like, you know, and that that really toughened me up. But I do remember when I got the call, um uh Michael Cleary, I think contacted my dad first, you know, and um I was in school when um when he contacted him. And I remember mom and dad afterwards telling me like that ma'am didn't want me going in to the to the senior panel at all she thought I was too young she just didn't want me going there like going in playing with women you know um but it was dad that kind of really pushed for it and he thought look if I'm good enough I'm old enough and let me go um so I suppose I have to thank dad for letting me off um but I suppose deep down ma'am wanted me to go but like anything I suppose I was only 14 and she didn't want me to to be exposed to, to hardship <laughs> yeah great story because I suppose as well as the obviously the physical and the training load you know I'm just thinking as well you know when you win in all Ireland there's a banquet there's nights out I'm sure after the 2000 win the cup traveled around the county for weeks if not months and you know there must have been a lot of seven up thrown your way were you always allowed to go to all those events or did your parents kind of go with you or were they nervous that way that you were so young and Probably enough, like I suppose it's probably different, it's a different era. And uh, I suppose you're talking 20 years later, but back then, I think I was in the thick of it all. I was always at everything. I went and no, mum and dad didn't always come with me, like you know what I mean? They kind of let me off, but I suppose there was a lot of, I suppose they trusted the players around me, you know, and the older players actually, in fairness, really looked after me. Um, like they really kind of treated me as the kid, if, if you like. Um, so I think they were always happy in the knowledge that they'd always be looking out for me. And there was a lot of really sensible people there. Um, and I suppose I was a sensible enough girl as well. You know, I wasn't, I had no interest in in drink or I had no interest in anything like that. Like, you know, I just wanted to go and have a good time and, and they trusted me like, you know, so it was, it was great. Yeah. That and, and thinking back then, you talk about players looking out for you. Can you remember back to your first train session or your first year in the panel? Was there any player in particular maybe that took you under your wing and took you under their wing and looked after you and helped you out? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like uh, I remember my very first training session. Like I said, I never really got nervous, but uh, I remember my first training session. I'd been, I, I played a, I think it was another fourteen match that morning. It was a Saturday morning. Uh, I think I played an under fourteen match with Templemore. And I left to go to training and was on in Simple Stadium. And I remember my dad drove me and we pulled up outside and uh, there was a lot of the cars were parked outside. They were obviously waiting for the gates or the, the, the gates to be opened to go in. And um, I remember Michael Cleary coming straight over to the car the minute we pulled up. And uh, I got out, I got my gear, whatever, and I walked over. And I just remember Philly Fogarty was the very first person. And I wouldn't have known Philly because although I played with her in Cashel, I was in Temple Moor at the time. And I didn't know Philly that well. And straight away, she came over to chat to me. And I just went in and they all just welcomed me. I just felt welcome straight away. And if you were to ask me if there was any one particular player, like I'd have to refer to Deirdre Yuzak, um all the time, even up to the time that Deirdre finished herself. I don't know, I always felt like she all, she was always kind of looking out for me that little bit like, you know, and uh, yeah. particularly on the field, 
you know, I, I'd say she was always making sure that I was, wasn't being treated badly or, you know, she'd always look, look to kind of stand up for me. And um, sure, the final couldn't have gone any better for you. You know, you scored two points. Um, I think you set up a goal. You know, it must have been, I'm thinking like a, like a youngster signing, getting trials in England, you know, soccer or signing for Man United or something to be like, you know, obviously you, you were so big into Camogie. You loved your Camogie. You were playing, you know, 24-7. And here you were playing in an all Ireland senior Camogie final, scoring two points you know, in front of maybe 15,000 people, like, you know, must have been dreams come true kind of stuff. Yeah, like, if I was to be honest, I had no idea what was facing, you know, insofar as like, I mean, there was a big build up to the match and uh, I enjoyed it, it was brilliant. Um, and I, I remember being so surprised the morning of the All-Ireland, I remember getting up and I remember there's posters all over Templemore, who should be look. I was just amazed at this, like that people would go to the bother, like that people would even be aware of what was going on. Do you know what I mean? So that was grand. And we went and we played the All Ireland. And like I said, when I think back, I don't even think I was that nervous at all. Like I, I just remember just maybe I was just in my own little bubble or whatever. So the, the match went great. I played well. And I just remember after the match, walking out, um, out of the the dressing room, and I remember talking to is it Jerry Slevin um, from the Nina Garden. He was kind of doing a bit of an interview with me and there was others, and I just remember walking out along, him. and I was in my own head thinking, I'm walking out here and getting on the bus, and when we walked out, like it must have been like, I have no idea, I can't put a number on it, but it seemed like thousands of people standing outside, waiting for us, and I think that's kind of when it hit me, the of the enormity of it like and I was there thinking all these people are here for us like and people started asking me to sign like kids were asking me to sign hurlies and stuff I was just amazed at this like why do they want my autograph like you know so um yeah I think it was only then that I realized this is a big thing like um so bring it right back then to playing um you know with Temple Moore like that you did loads of success with Temple Moore you were so young um you tr in 2000 am I right saying that you won the Fela, uh, we'll say, county final with Templemore with Camogie, and you also won the football and the Hurling Fela uh, in the one year. Mm, yeah, with the boys, with the Brackens, yeah. Yeah, so there must have been three Fela weekends, but I think the Hurling and Camogie would have clashed, would they? The Hurling and the Camogie clashed. Um, uh, <laughs> this is probably a little kind of a, an awkward, not an awkward one, but I can remember at the time, uh, I think it was on an Arbat or somewhere like that. It was on up the north, anyway. And um, we, as a family, had booked a holiday months before that, right? So we booked a holiday to Spain. And uh, I remember coming up, to, when they realized what was after happening, we had our holiday booked. Uh, you might laugh at this now, but um, I won't say the two clubs were bickering, but there was a huge, huge, huge disagreement as to who I was going to be playing. So like, obviously the Camogie would have been the one, the natural one I was going to go to. But the boys really, really were pushing strongly for me to play with them as well. So the way obviously Fela works, like, I don't know, the Camogie Club were probably being hosted by, for example, Bursa King and the Hurlan were being hosted by, I don't know, we'll say Drummond Inch. So they were a fair distance apart. Um, so I just remember at the time, mom and dad made the call and they said, you know what, we'll go on the holidays. And I remember going on holidays and uh, now I, part of us felt bad about it too. But then at, we said at the same time, like there was actually going to be possibly a falling out here about who I was going to play with. And I remember being in Spain. Now I can't remember now, this is going back many years, but I can't remember whether it was the Camogie Club or the Hurling Club, but uh, is it the Friday that they played the three games? So there was the three games, we'll say, uh, round games, round robin games on the Friday. Now we were in Spain and I can remember um, getting a phone call in Spain to know like somebody was prepared to fly me home. They were after qualifying and getting through for Saturday. I can't remember, as I said, whether it was the boys or the girls. I'm almost certain that happened. But like, I was only 14. Mam and dad were like, enjoy your holidays. You'll have enough. Food. So that's what happened there. <laughs> So I suppose I could say I regret it in one sense, but you know what? I don't like because 
at the end of the day, I suppose, I had a lot played. And, you know, maybe this is just a mark of me. It really didn't bother me. Do you know, it actually didn't bother me. I was, that's, I was really, really laid back and easy going about everything. And uh, it, it didn't bother me one bit. Well, like a holiday to Spain is obviously a massive thing too at that age. But I actually yeah. didn't know that story. I was only, like I said, I was only going back through your role of honour. Yeah, I and I can't the... remember the football. I didn't play in the football weekend. And I can't remember why. I think we possibly could have still been on holidays for it. I think it could have been the week after. Um, I, I it can't, sounds I genuinely... like it probably worked out for the best with the holiday, though, because... It probably did. And I'd say deep down, mum and dad were probably thrilled about it. Because, like, if I had been around, like, there would have been potentially six matches on Friday. And, like, I was the type where if there was a match, I played. And there probably would have been an expectation. And, you know, when it would come to it, if it came to a crunch game, they'd want you to play them all, like. So it was yeah. probably the, it probably worked out for the best. Because I was one, I was wondering, oh, how come that more didn't win? But for now, I know that you weren't there. That's what I, <laughs> I don't know about that. Did you go another year when you were younger, even? Was there something? Yeah, like yeah. I, we won it in '96. Uh, so I was 10. So um, I just remember that because Linda, my older sister, was on it as well. So Linda was 14 and I was 10. So we won it that year. I think we were hosted down Wexford. But you weren't playing it that year. I was, yeah. I played that year. I played all the games that year. At 10 years of age? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember playing and, uh, yeah, we won the final in Walsh Park. Jeez, I don't know. Something tells me. I definitely scored a goal. I could have scored one, one or one two. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, I played all those games, yeah, every one of them, down in, um, that wing forward. Like, you were just a positive star, like, you were, you know, you were so good at such a young age, like, even I came across a photo of you playing with the boys under 14, and like, you're, you're I think you're as strong and as, as any of the boys, but your hurling and your touch and your skill for such a young age was just, you know, it's once in a generation now, you know, I know you played, you, you know, obviously won four All-Irelands, that great team uh, that won five All-Irelands um, and there was loads of, you know, fantastic players, but I don't think anyone achieved what you achieved at such a young age. You know, I don't think if you take the dear to the McDonald's, I don't think if you compared all them at 10, 11, 12 to you at that age, I don't think there's a comparison, but they all turned into great players in their prime, but nobody was winning all Ireland's and All-Stars at 14, 15, 16 years of age like you were. Yeah, I suppose that's, I peaked, I peaked very early. <laughs> that was my <laughs> peak years of 14 and 15. Uh, yeah, I played so much of it. And like, I have to say, I really, really, really was blessed walking into a team like that at 14. Like, you know, it, you know, if I, if I was to, like, it's, it's very easy um, you know, like to say how great it was and all that, but like I was going into phenomenal players. Like I was going in playing in a full forward line with Eva McDonald and Jerry Hughes. Like you know, I outside me was like Philly Fogarty and all these players. And you know, at another time, if I was a couple of years later or a couple of years earlier, I wouldn't have achieved what I achieved. If, if you know what I mean. So um, yeah, it was pox luck that I came when I came. Honest. And then I suppose moving on, then you moved to Cashel in 2001. Um, your father John was from Cashel, and was it work that took took you back to Cashel? Was it? Well, no. Both mom and dad are were lived in Cashel. They grew up in Cashel, and mm -hmm. dad worked in the bank. Yeah, he worked in the bank. So, like for years and years, he moved around from place to place. Like he did a stint in Nina. He did a stint down in Charleville. I was actually born, uh, when I was born, we were living in Charleville, in Cork. Um, so the plan was always to go back to Cashel, no matter what. So mum and dad had made that decision uh, as soon as he started going on the road and traveling. Uh, and things kind of changed in the bank at the time. Like, uh, like when dad was younger, wherever you worked, you had to live. That's the way, that was always kind of the rule of thumb. But things loosened up then and later on. So, um, yeah, they just decided then that it was the time. Dad, I suppose, was probably looking down the line to retirement and all that. So that was the time they chose to move back. And did you mind to say you were 
what if you were 15 maybe did you mind leaving school and leaving friends and more and moving to cash was it a big no I didn't and like that's another thing I suppose like that I was that's just the way I was I was so laid back like, and I was so easy going about everything um and then I suppose camogie was a massive thing for me as well insofar as like uh I I knew a lot of people in cash and from it and plus like my we have a lot of relations in cash so like when I think back to when I was younger, we spent every single weekend in cash. So, you know, it wasn't as if we were moving down to a strange place. It wasn't strange for us. Like it was, it was our second home. So um, yeah, it didn't bother us. We were, we were all happy to do it. And obviously you went on to have huge success with cash winning, um, I think the six senior county titles, six monster titles, two all Ireland titles, um, you know, to, to win a senior club all Ireland, you know, with your club, it must, you know, it must be so sweet, especially as it didn't come, you know, it was hard earned. You suffered, you suffered to feet and you got on a hard to get past all Ireland semi final. So to win a, a club all Ireland final with your club, with your, you know, your teammates, your friends, um, family, you know, it must have been sweet. Yeah, it was like, um, like that. We moved to Cash in 2001 and we got to the All Ireland club final that year. Um, and I suppose like that, um, if the truth be known, it probably like the three of us were on it, Helen, Linda and myself, I, I'm speaking for myself now when I say this, I suppose it probably wouldn't have meant as much to us as it did to other cash players. Do you know what I mean? We were only kind of relatively new. Um, but I, suppose, I just, I remember, um, I remember missing a free to, to level things up in that all Ireland. Um, <laughs> these are the things that stick with you. Um, but like we were, you know, we did. We I, I remember like for all those years, we we lost all Ireland semi-finals by really really narrow margins, um, and it it felt like it was never going to work out for us. But um, in 07, yeah, it was just it was just brilliant to finally get over the line, um, and like that, it was great. I remember in 07, Linda was on the team with me which was brilliant, like, uh, along with your friends. It was lovely to have a family member on the team with you as well. And um, Helen was part of it as well. Um, and then in 09, Dad was actually training us. Um, and we were all kind of involved. So that's what really made it special. And, you know, I'm just thinking Stephen Gleeson has a book out at the moment called um, Game of My Life, where he talks to past Tipperary hurlers and they talk about you know a game that will live with them forever you know their best performance and is there a particular game you know you won so much at club and county is there a particular game that stands out in your mind where you were like yeah that's one game where everything just went my way I couldn't miss it was just the perfect game for you uh yeah well uh like I mean there's some memorable games in so far as like I think of the 09 all Ireland um it was just a dogged performance and um, I remember that game but if I like going back to your question if there's a game where I think yeah everything just went my way I remember playing it was either a it was a Munster semi-final it wasn't a Munster final it was a Munster semi-final against Grana Balangari I can't tell you what year it was I'd say it could have been 06 just to throw a guess there um, and it was on in Cashel and I just remember I was playing full forward and probably had the game of my life that day um, just everything just went well for me. I think I scored three ten or three eleven that day. Um, wow. Just I, it was just one of those days, as I said, that everything went really well for me. Like and um, yeah, that was probably the most memorable performance um, that I've put in. Yeah. And what would that? You know, you just mentioned full forward there. I would have known you playing corner forward, half forward, centre forward, even out midfield. Um, and full forward, but which do you think was your best position or your favorite, favorite position? Uh, my favorite position would have been the half forward line for definite. Um, yeah, I would say my best position is being forward, um, being honest with you. Um, center forward was probably my least favorite position in the forward line. And you know, it's funny to say, to say that because most people, um, a lot of people would say it's their favorite position because they're so involved there. Um, 
I wasn't particularly good under the high ball. And I think that's why maybe I kind of disliked centre forward a little bit because I kind of felt I needed to be catching ball there. Um, I really like corner forward as well, but sure, as, as a forward, you know, it all depends on your supply. Like It all depends on what kind of ball you're getting or if you're getting enough of ball. But I suppose number 12 was my favourite position. Okay. And just, um, you know, you, you taste you tasted so much success, but I suppose there was defeats along the way as well. There was the three senior all Ireland finals that you lost in 2 5 no 6 And, you know, I mentioned losing the club all Ireland final and different county finals and things like that. But was there a particular defeat that, you know, you regret or that niggles away at you that you'd say, oh, I'd love to go back and change the result of that? Uh, yeah, like a lot of the club, a lot of the club games, um, all Ireland semi-finals and stuff. I, I'm going to say I can count three where we lost by a point. Like I can remember a game in Nina against Freshford, we lost by a point, and um, yeah, I regret yeah. over that. Like I mean, um, I suppose it's easy. I'm not saying I'm not blaming the referee, but it's easy blame a referee. Like, but I felt we were kind of wrong that day. Um, you know, but and then I I can there's one particular game we were playing um Davids from Galway in an All Ireland semi final and it was on in New Inn and I can remember we drew the game right but I remember distinctively um breaking through um I don't know where I was playing that day but I was in the full forward position anyway and I remember turning my one and running for the ball and uh this was towards the end of the game it was a draw match. And uh, I'd, I'd gone, I'd, I'd skinned her like, and she threw out the hurley and tripped me and I got no free. And I do remember there was absolute war after the match, absolute war. So like that one sickened me. And then they went on to beat us in the replay by a point up in Galway. So like those kind of games would stand out in your head and you feel, you feel really hard done by and sickened. But that one in particular, my dad still talks about it and still gets mad <laughs> When, when he thinks back to it, like. <laughs> and thinking back your career then again you played under some unbelievable managers you know who would you rate um, as the best manager you ever played under um, I, I suppose I'd have to say there's two that stand out and it's, it's Michael Cleary and Raymond Ryan the tip anyway and um, uh, the two of them were brilliant. There were two of them were very different, like in their approach. Um, I don't know. They were just so professional. I'd never experienced anything like it going in playing with Michael Cleary, like. But um, you know, it was, he just had this extra little touch, like um, like obviously the training was fantastic, but like the pace of it and the speed of it. But that's what you'd expect going in playing senior. Um, but it was just the whole professionalism that he brought to it. And then Ramy came along, and Ramy was different, like. But um, yeah, I thought Ramey was was exceptional as well. Um, those two would stand out massively now. To, to be fair, um, they like anybody who would ever ask me that question immediately. That's the answer I would give to them. And then looking back on the players you played alongside, is there one player you could name as the best player you ever played alongside with? I'm sure you'd have to say Deirdre Hughes is definitely there. Um, definitely, Deirdre was something else like oh geez like she was just brilliant and her strength and the work that she did even off the ball that you know you wouldn't even see um and like I suppose thinking back like the vision I went in as a 14 year old and like she was the real established she was the star of the team like but she'd always be looking to throw the ball out and pass it to you like you know and you, when you think back to that like she could easily have just said like after she's only a kid like you know she's only a child I'll go myself here but, you know she was she was really really good that way um, but there's some brilliant players like, but like Philly, I have to give a shout out to Philly. I think Philly was just fantastic and she's probably not um, as decorated as she deserves, being honest. Like Philly probably hasn't got as many all-stars as maybe I have, but she probably deserves to have more, being honest. Philly was just a class player um, and she was young too, like playing in that 2000 All-Ireland. Um, in my opinion, she's probably up there as being one of the best, but probably not um, the most underrated. Turn around to the toughest player you ever marked, or maybe was there a player you hated marking? 
Yeah, there was actually. There was a player, Trey's Brophy. I used to hate Mark in her training. Um, uh, I don't know what it was. I think she was so wiry, but she was like, I relied on my speed and all of that. She was always able to keep up to me. I hated Mark in her. She was really, really sticky. Um, yeah, Trey's is probably the one that I hated Mark in the most. Um, Una too, but I never really had to mark Una too much at county training, to be honest. I was kind of lucky I avoided her. Uh, I think it was because she was full back and I was kind of always in the half forward line. Um, but definitely Trey's, yeah, I hated Mark. And did you have any, you know, you played so many big games and um, there was always pressure, I suppose, on you and expectations. Did you have any superstitions that or things that you used to do, you know, ritually before a game or? Uh, not really, but I do remember like there was one scarf that I probably, this is later on now, um, not at the start of playing with tip. Like this is kind of going on maybe after two or three years, but there was a scarf that I had to wear. And until the day I stopped playing with tip, that was the scarf I always wore with cashel and with tip. I never wore anything else. Um, and I'd be, I minded it like, I really minded it. Um, because I was afraid of my life someone would take it or something like that but um, like if you want to call that a superstition that's probably the only thing I can I can remember um, and I was a little bit um, I was really fussy about my hurlies as well really fussy now and about grips like I'd be constantly changing the grips and like they had to be perfect if if you know the way if a grip was slightly torn at all that was it it was binned yeah I was a bit fussy that way <laughs> And well, it worked for you. So, um, you played seven All Ireland finals in a row, um, from O two to O six, or sorry, from two thousand to two thousand six. Um, what was the typical routine, you know, for the day of a final? Um, heading to Crow Park that morning, and what was it like? Um, well, it was always up early anyway. Um, and I'd always have a few pucks at home first just out to the side of the house. So a few pucks could be at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I just always had to, um, and I'd always eat breakfast at home, even though we used to always meet in horse and jockey first and like for breakfast, but I used to never eat breakfast in the horse and jockey. I just liked my own little routine at home and I liked my own bowl of cereal or whatever I used to have, which that's what I had, a bowl of cornflakes. Um, uh, so we used to always meet in the jockey and um, we used to go up along and uh, I think we used to stop off in the Puccine still it was um, and have a cup of tea and a few sandwiches or whatever. Um, and then we'd go for the puck around <clears throat> for the match. Um, and I don't think it was always for all those all Irelands in the same place, but in Nafina, if you know where Nafina is, it's very close to Coke Park. We often went there for the puck around. Um, yeah, and spent whatever length of time, three quarters of an hour, having a puck, few pucks there, and then on to Croke Park, um, where you'd go in and you'd go into the dressing room, you'd get your programme, you sit down, and then you'd go out and you'd kind of, which was always a nice thing, you go out and you just kind of take it all in, really, while you're watching the junior game or whatever, you just kind of savour and you have a good look around then, because that's going to be your last chance to have a look around, really. And just going back through them All Ireland finals, um, I know in '99 Tip Beck Kenny, then in 2000 year you were playing, uh, you bet Cork, 2001 you bet Kenny, then it was bet Cork, or Cork won in 2002, and then Tip won bet Cork in 2003 and 2004. Like Cork were really um, our big rivals back then, and you know, did you feel that rivalry? I know, um, you know. When you lost in 2002, it was a massive thing to get back and win again in 2003 to beat Cork. Or, you know, when even when the girls won at 99, because they hadn't beaten Cork, 2000 to drive, the, the motivation was to beat Cork in the final. There was a real rivalry with Tip and Cork in that early 2000s. Oh, there was, yeah. It was all, Cork were always the obstacle because we, I think we met them so regularly and it was always, um, it was always so tight, like, you know, because um, we used to meet him in Munster finals and we used to meet him then in league matches. And yeah, I won't say there was a hatred there. I, I, it's probably too strong a word to use, but um, yeah, I really disliked uh, 
I really dislike losing to Cork and I don't know things always seems to get seem to get very serious when we used to be playing against Cork um, um, and that would even go back to even playing underage playing minor as well um, um, you know I suppose there was a lot of battles and um, Cork had beaten Tip so many times before that and given him feral hidings and I think it was it kind of a few years before the success started with Tip um, Cork heavily defeated Tip and kind of I suppose had a bit of a sneer about it and I think that all not necessarily with me but that stuck with some of the older players and that kind of transcended down to us we kind of got it from them that you know you know you take these games very very seriously and who who would you have marked mainly back then against Cork or who, who did you say? um players that spring to mind I can remember my first all Ireland marking um Denise Cronin now I was 14 I literally didn't know any single Cork player going into that match and like who all these people were um like these were just names to me like um, and maybe that was a good thing because I think Denise Cronin was like in her 30s at the time. She was, she had a reputation of being a bit of a tough nut, you know. But of course, I I had no idea who I was going into Mark. I just remember Mark and her in the first All Ireland. Other players that spring to mind, I remember Mark and Rena Buckley an awful lot. Um, Jem O'Connor an awful lot as well. Um, and Nagiri a few times. Um, yeah, they're the ones that kind of spring to mind. Being honest, and 2005 final, you know, Tip were winning by I think it was I think we were up four points uh, with a couple of minutes to go. No, we're up a point a couple of minutes to go, and then end up car finished very strongly, and, and we lost by four points, one seventeen to one thirteen. But in that particular final, you actually scored one five, and you finished top score of the championship that year with a goal in twenty two points. And then the following year in 2006, Cork um, won well, you know, gave us a right beating in the final. And I suppose Tip Haffin got back to that, you know, it was Wexford went on, won three All Ireland's, Cork went on, won more All Ireland's, you know. So even though you had a very successful career and, you know, won lots of awards, I suppose there were lots of lean years with Tip, I suppose, in the second half of your inter county career. And what do you think changed? Do you think it was, you know, I suppose, the team to transition and moving on or do you just think other counties you know Wexford came you know Tip would have never had trouble beating Wexford in in the beginning and now here Wexford are winning three all Irelands in a row what what team what do you change for Tip's fortune do you think yeah well I suppose personnel is is probably a huge thing like as you said the team changed a lot of there was a good few retirements at the time um and I suppose with a lot of retirements, we weren't probably kind of hard to explain this, but like we, I think the tip team that um, I, I started playing with, I think probably would have done, would have gone through a brick wall for you. Like I can remember Michael Cleary calling training and people complaining because we weren't training enough, you know? And, and asking for extra training. And I can remember him saying, no, 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 you know, you've enough done now, you've enough done. Um, so attitudes as well. Now, I'm not saying the, the, the players that came um, after 2007 hadn't good attitudes. I'm not saying that at all, but it's a combination of everything. Like, and, um, you know, some players maybe probably hadn't the same drive, maybe. Um, and then um, we did lose an awful lot, like from the 05, 06, 07, those years, we, we lost an awful lot of players that are very, very difficult to replace. And plus, we had raised the bar, and it's very hard to maintain that. Like, um, so it was inevitable, like you can't keep that going all the time. So other players had, or other teams, I should say, um, had improved massively as well. So it's, it's all those, combi- you know, it's a combination of all those things. And um, you finished your Camogie career with Tip in 2011, and people might be surprised to notice that you're only you're only 25, so you're still very young. Um, but obviously you had played since you were 14. And um, do you know what was? I think you were getting married the following year. Uh, you were moving to Galway. Was that kind of the main motivation 
I don't know if the motivation the right word to finish playing with tip or you know had you maybe had you lost motivation to play with tip or did you just feel that was the time was right to step away yeah there was a few things uh like you said I was getting married and um if I was to be honest Damien was was still hurling with Galway at the time and the year or two before that I'd missed out on an awful lot of his games um playing myself you know um and I missed it an awful lot and I just remember um I, I maybe it was 2010 I'm not sure or maybe it was 2011 maybe it was I remember missing a good few of his championship games because I was playing myself and I started feeling a bit resentful and I just kind of thought to myself if that's the way I'm feeling about missing his games am I actually losing interest you know, or maybe I played so much. So that was kind of one thing. Um, I just kind of wanted to have the freedom to do whatever I wanted. And I was the type, if I was doing a thing, I was doing it properly. I wasn't going to be committing to something. And, you know, um, and also um, I kind of, I'd hurt my back playing uh, a club game. Um, actually, I remember it was training for a county final. And I'm going to struggle to tell you the year, but it was around that time anyway. Um, and it was the Sunday morning before a county final. And I remember it was kind of a wet, all dirty morning. And I remember doing something, twisting funny and hurting my back. And I was so bad that week that I couldn't sit down. I couldn't walk. I was just in an awful state. So I remember... Remember, I got physio and I, I had decided I um, so I managed to play the game. It was against Roman Inch, actually. So whatever year that was. Um and was that the year that the game was called off at halftime? 2011, I'd say. 2011, that was the year. It was called off at half time. And I was standing in full forward, and there was nobody as glad as me because I wasn't able to run, I wasn't able to move. And I was saying, thanks be to God. So I managed to play the, the, the refix game or whatever. Um, but I was never right after that. And even to this day now, my back wouldn't be hectic. like So that was kind of another thing. I just kind of felt, geez, I don't want to be kind of niggly. And prior to that, I kind of had a few niggly injuries. So, um, yeah, it was kind of a combination. And then, of course, getting married. And I knew I was going to be moving to Galway. And I knew it would be harder to give the commitment. So, yeah, it was all three factors, really. Because I, I remember at the time, you know, you stayed on and you played with Cashel, I think, for two more years, 2013. But I remember at the time when you were moved to Galway or you were finished playing with Tip, all the rumours that, you know, you were going to go play with Galway or that you're going to transfer to a club in Galway and all this. And did, did anyone ever report you about playing Camogie in Galway or Clover County? Yeah, lots, lots. Um, I got a few, I got, got a few offers all right. Um, from all the surrounding clubs like but I never had any intention of playing with them if I was going to be playing I was going to be playing with cash um, so like they, I, I let them come or whatever and they, they asked me but I absolutely and to this day I, I've never played um, up here and in fairness now Tumna, like you know they're only a junior team and they're, they're struggling for numbers but like that I just don't think my heart would be in it to be honest Um so, uh, and anyway, as it happened, I actually, uh, I was expecting Aina in, in 2013, probably not long after moving up here. So that kind of put a halt to all those things anyway. <laughs> That's one way of, of getting out of it anyway. Um, yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're talk, talk, you mentioned like the Jim O'Connor there and she's only retiring this year, you know, and... But like you had won so much, I suppose, and like you said, I suppose Tipperary weren't as competitive in the latter years. You know, it would be it would have been hard for you to stay, you know, hungry for it. But at the same time, Camogie took up so much of your life that when you did finish playing, um, you know what filled that void? I know you know for anyone doesn't know, you're married to Damien Hayes, who doesn't need, I suppose, an instruction. To you know, if a great Galway hurler and club and county level, so. Um, you know, you were saying you went sporting his man. Is that what kind of filled the void once you finished playing yourself? Because like Camogie had take must have taken up so much of your life. Yeah, like it's 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 funny to think about it. Like I played so much, and like I was playing football as well. Um, that like 
once I finished, I finished, like, you know what I mean? And when you say what well, filled the void, um, like, I suppose I was kind of, I was lucky. I had Dana in early 2014 and uh, then Barry arrived in 2015. So, like, since then, I suppose, being with the kids and supporting Damien, like, Damien only retired a couple of years ago. So that kind of kept us going. Like, I, I enjoyed going to all his matches and and things like that. Um, but as regards myself, like, I, I don't play any team sports up here or anything like that. Um, I do a bit of running. Bit of, I played a bit of tennis there for a while, do a bit of walking, but that's about it. Like, so it's just, it was such a huge transition, I suppose, going from like 100 miles an hour training and playing matches constantly. I think I just enjoyed stopping and taking a break and just doing things for myself and going away for weekends and I just I, I never realized the freedom like, uh, I was able to do whatever I wanted and go wherever I wanted um, and I remember the first summer that I finished playing with Ted I really really enjoyed it I didn't really go anywhere we didn't travel because Damien was still hurling but I just loved the freedom of being able to head off for the weekend and just being answerable to nobody um, so yeah I think you know just years and years of being tied up um, kind of made me realise that it was nice just to break free for a while. And are you playing any golf? Didn't you used to play golf when you were younger? I used to play golf an awful lot when I was younger. Huge amount. Um, but as I got older, I, I just kind of lost interest. I played in, Dun played in Temple Moor a lot, and then I played in Dundrum when we moved to Cashel. But um, yeah, I, th I think I just kind of lost interest. It's just so time-consuming that when I kind of started studying for my leave cert and when I went to college, I just finished up playing golf, really. Very good. And um, just to mention your family there earlier, your sisters, um, Linda and Helen, you know, two great Camogie players played, you know, won a lot with their club and inter-county. And in 2001, uh, they would have been on the junior team that won the all Ireland final. And then that was played before the senior match. And, you know, you won a senior all Ireland then. Um, that must have been a great family affair for, you know, your parents. And your sisters all be winning all Ireland finals on the one day. Ah, it was like I suppose, yeah. It's, it was a really memorable, and like that's one of the pictures. I don't have a huge amount of Mogi pictures in the house here, but that's one that takes pride of place. The three of us uh, in our tip jerseys um, that that year in O one, um, you know, and it's 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 kind of like if ever a family photo was pulled out of the five of us, that's the one I think that we all like to look at you know um i suppose thinking back it was it was such a, a memorable day um particularly for mom and dad and i know that they're fierce proud of it like and obviously you're close to your sisters and they would have been delighted for you winning the senior all learned but i often wonder were they ever a little bit just a tiny bit maybe jealous you know that i suppose they were on the junior team i'm sure they'd love to have been on the senior team and here was their little sister playing with the seniors Ah, I don't think so. Genuinely, I don't think so. Um, like, they were delighted for me. And, like, Helen, uh, both of them would say, like, that I suppose, honestly, I always had more talent than them and I always probably achieved more. And I, I probably had more interest in, in the game than the two of them anyway. Like, I was always, always, even when I was younger, I was never without a hurling a ball. Um. But Linda used to give me stick, like, and she used to make life a bit tough for me. I'll tell you a story. I remember one time I had this hurley. I, like, I told you I was really fussy about my hurleys. And I remember I had this hurley, and I was, it was just a fabulous hurley. And um, I don't know, in a moment of weakness, Linda asked me for it. And she said she'd buy it off me. So I think she bought it for, like, a tenner, you know. And then I just, no, actually, sorry, I'm wrong. I gave it to her in a moment of weakness, because I always like to have a couple of hurleys. I had them all lined up there and I had a few. And in, in this moment, anyway, I said to Linda, she could have the hurley, right? So after a while, I realized, geez, I made a mistake here. I should not have given Linda the hurley. Um, and like Linda never, ever, ever bought a hurley for herself. She always just took my hand-me-downs. She could be bothered. Like. So I said to Linda, I know, actually, Linda, I'm going to take that hurley back. And she was like, no way. To make a long story short, anyway, I'd give her a pair of jeans and I'd pay her 30 euro for the hurley back. <laughs> so Linda always made it tough for me, um, <laughs> just just to be awkward. <laughs> she always gained out of it too. 
she's, she's a good business head, so Linda. She, she yeah, has she has. Yeah, exactly. But no, it's going, they, they were always delighted for me and couldn't have been more supportive, being honest. Excellent. Um, so tell us about the time you went up to Port Sumner to buy a car. Yeah, yeah, I went up. I was mad interested. All I wanted was a golf. Um, and I don't know, I just said to Dad, it was on Saturday, will we go up to Port Sumner? Now, genuinely, I'd never, I'd never met Damien before. Um, but of course, I knew of him. So we went up anyway. And uh, I think when we went into the showroom, he wasn't there. But he told me afterwards, he was he he came on after a few minutes. He was after being at a training session or a match or something. And he came in and he recognized me and he just came over to say hello and he introduced us. And we just started getting chatting about the car or whatever. So um, he started showing us cars and like dad and mom were there with me. So we bought the car. Um, that was grand. And uh, I just had to go back up then during the week to collect it. And I went back up during the week and that's where we just kind of hit it off, I suppose. We were chatting and that's that's where it all stemmed from. And life for you now today, um, you have three kids, two boys and a girl. Um, are they, I know Ruth's only 10 months, but are the boys, are they into hurling or I know they're still young? Yeah, well, Aina is seven now, and Aina is fanatical about sport in general. Um, hurling, rugby, soccer. Um, he'll watch any sport on TV. He'll play. He'll play anything. Um, yeah, he's really, really interested. Barry is five. Barry has a bit of interest. He kind of goes along with Aina, but he hasn't got the same level of interest yet. Um, but you know that'll come. I think Barry would prefer rugby as opposed to anything else, simply because it's probably easier to play. Um, so, yeah, like Aina talks about, he loves watching matches. He's all the gear. Um, yeah, that's all he, he wants. So, look, it would be great if he stayed that way for us. But at the end of the day, once he's playing something, we'll be happy. And I'm sure you've heard us lots of times, but... I'm sure people in Port Tumlin are thinking his mother's Claire Brogan, his father's Damien Hayes, future star there maybe. Does, would would the kids know themselves has, you know, that you have that one all Ireland club and county and Damien as all stars and club all Ireland or would that mean that Dana? Would you know that? Well, Barry absolutely would mean not to, but Aina, yeah, Aina is fairly clued in. Like Aina knows, like he'd name nearly every hurler, um, intercounty hurler for you. So he's very, very tuned in and he's very aware. And uh, he'd often, it's gas, like he'd often ask me questions about, he wouldn't ask Damien now as many, but he'd, he'd often ask me questions about Damien playing for Galway and all that. Um, so he's aware, but like, I don't think he'd even be thinking down the lines of like, God, I wonder will I be as good as he or, you know, um, he's too young for that, but he's definitely yeah. very interested in what we've achieved. Yeah. That's lovely. And could you see, uh, did you ever have any interest in maybe coaching or any that side of it? Or could you see yourself get involved in teams if the lads are playing or? Yeah, that's the only way I could see myself getting involved, being honest, is kind of just with kids underage. I never really had an interest in going coaching any team, be honest. Um, it's, it's a case of me playing or and maybe that's a selfish way of looking at it, but I just never had that desire, that interest. Um, but definitely I've helped out with the boys underage and uh, I'm sure now when Ruth gets to the age, I'll be, I'll be down giving them a hand as well. Excellent. So look, Claire, thanks again for being uh, my guest today. Um, I had the pleasure of playing alongside you with you very many years ago and I suppose playing against you at club and you're always an absolutely unbelievable player but and you what you achieved at such a young age was fantastic but I can honestly say there isn't an arrogant bone in your body and I suppose if anyone had an excuse to be cocky it was you but you're always just so down to earth and it, it just flows out of you there again how laid back and down to earth and what a pleasant person you are it's a brilliant trait and um I really enjoyed our chat and, um, you know, until I contacted you a few weeks ago about coming on the podcast, I suppose I hadn't seen you or heard from you in years. So it was lovely to catch up and to relive some great memories. 
um, from your career and I suppose getting insight into your life um, now. And so just thanks very much for coming on the show. Um, it was a great chat. Thanks a million, Journey. It was a pleasure and I enjoyed it myself, to be honest. So if you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Camogie Report uh, podcast, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to Tipperary Camogie TV, our brand new YouTube channel.